Once again, as we all stand, please. We pray. Let's turn to page number 106. 106. Praise him, praise him. Praise him, praise him, Jesus our blessed Redeemer. Sing, oh, earth, his wonderful love proclaim. Hail him, hail him, highest archangels in glory. Strength and honor unto his holy name. My God, shepherd, Jesus will guard his children. our blessed Redeemer, heavenly portals, loud with Hosanna free, Jesus, Savior, reigneth forever and ever, crown him, crown him, prophet and priest and king, Christ is coming over the world victorious, power and glory unto the Lord belong, praise him, praise him, Tell of his excellent greatness. Praise him, praise him, ever in joyful song. Amen. Amen. Brother Brian Galloway, step up here. We'll pray together. We're glad you're here. Others are continuing to come in. Others have not been well. We're glad you're back and able to feel like being in the Lord's house tonight. Hope everybody enjoyed the Wednesday night supper. And we do welcome our visitors tonight. We noticed some visitors here. And very few visitors, most everybody else home people. But if you're visiting with us, thank you for being here. And may the Lord bless you. All right, we're going to pray together. After we pray together, we'll shake hands and welcome our visitors, all right? Brother Galloway, if you will. Lord, we magnify you for your mercy. Amen. Thank you so much, God, for the privilege to meet together with your people. Lord, I'm thankful I'm saved this Amen. evening. Lord, I'm glad my name's recorded in the Lamb's Book of Life. Lord, I magnify you and glorify you that you're God and beside you there's none else. And Lord, I ask you that you'd reign supreme over this service here tonight. Lord, we yield our minds, our hearts, our totality of our beings, Lord, to you. I ask you, God, to speak to us through the word of God. Pray that you'd give us ears to hear what the spirit of God has to say to us. Get glory unto yourself tonight and we'll bless you in Jesus' name. Thank you very much. We have some visitors back here in the left corner and maybe one or two more, but let's shake hands, all right? Everybody tell somebody you love them, all right?
Could your family sing? Could your family, please? practice tonight. If you would, take your hymnals. Everybody's going to need a hymn. We'll go to 488. We're going to do the second, third, and fourth verse if he keeps me singing. We're not going to skip them tonight. Let's all stand. Two, three, and four. All my life was wrecked. All my life was wrecked by sin and pride. This one filled my heart with pain. Jesus swept the cross of road guns ring. Stirred the slumbering boards again. Neath the sheltering wing, always looking on his smiling face. That is why I shout and sing. Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know, fills my every longing, keeps me singing as I go. We're going to do the fourth verse with music. Read the words. Here we go. Though sometimes he leads through waters deep, trials fall across the wind. Though sometimes the path seems rough and steep, see his footprints all the can or not, but Mark, if you feel like doing a solo, that'd be great, if you feel like it, but anyway, I know you always got a song on your heart, <laughs> most of the time, anyway, but anyway, think about it, all right? We're glad you're here, and we got this trio going to sing in just a moment, but we welcome each and every one of you, we appreciate you coming to church tonight, thank you uh, ladies and gentlemen, and young people as well, to help in, uh, in clean up with the meal and everything, with a great meal, we appreciate it. You know, it's not really fair, it's not really fair, Brother Randy that I preach every Wednesday night and can't go back for seconds. That's just not fair. I mean, the meal's great, and I appreciate the meal. All you that help and all you that participate, thank you so much. All right, now this is very important. There's a big revival going on at the Ingleside Baptist Church in Landrum, where Brother Shane Ezel is the pastor. That starts at 7 p.m. every night. And uh, tomorrow night, uh, they're going to take a van, Brother Nathan, uh, Ashley, and all the young people, anybody else would like to go, 
The van's going to leave at 6.15 from the parking lot. 6.15, if you'd like to go, then uh, you show up. And uh, if we have more, then they can take a bus or something. But if not, if they don't have enough, we'll take a car or a vehicle. But tomorrow night at 6.15, I think we're going to go. And uh, so may just go with you all. But uh, either way, some people drive, and that's fine too. So keep that in mind for tomorrow night if you'd like to go hear Brother Dean McNeese. And then uh, this Thursday and Friday, if you're interested, if you're parents, you're all welcome to go to the Grace Baptist Grace Christian School in Columbia, South Carolina, where the SCAX competition is taking place. That's this Thursday. And for Friday's the big, big day, but Thursday they do things as well. So that's the SCAX competition, the Fine Arts Festival in uh, West Columbia, South Carolina. And just ask questions, uh, look, call the school, you can get all the information you need about time. I think they even have a schedule available. I believe they do. So uh, you can get that and find out what event that your child will be participating in. That's going on then. And then Friday, March the 30th, is the Senior Saints Fellowship. They're going to Bob Jones University Living Art Gallery. And uh, they need everybody to, uh, Miss Suzanne, sign up again. I mean, make sure they're, or see you, want them to see you, or make, make sure you're on the list, all right? Make sure you're on the list if you're going and you're not in denial about being a senior citizen. So uh, you sign up. And they, they, they have to get a complete count for the uh, excursion there on March the 30th, all right? And then please don't forget, please don't, but Saturday, uh, that's um, April 21st, is our first big, big day for sowers and reapers. And we're looking for a, we, listen, I'm just going to tell you, we always have a great time. I mean it. I'm just sincere with you. We always have a great time. We go visit. We talk to people, uh, we get run out of yards, we get cussed at, we get doors slammed in our faces, we got people that have three cars in the driveway and don't come to the door, but you know what? We always have a great time. <laughs> and you know what else? We really do get to talk to some people. We really do. So I want you to come. I want you to put it down, and then we'll have a wonderful meal, a wonderful meal at 11.45 that day, all right? All right, y'all come on, whoever wants to come first. Come on, the trio, let's get the trio, and then we'll have another solo, all right? God bless you while our singers sing tonight. Come on. For the shedding of his blood, and if it had not been for God's amazing love, well, it's plain to see what a wretched soul I would be. But through the power of His grace, I have been set free. And now my life's been changed. I've been rearranged. Sin has no hold on me. He broke all my chains, removed all. There would 
Amen. Thank God for the blood shed that bought our salvation. Brought us where we are. All right, Brother Mark, you ready? God bless you as he sings. All right. I know where I would be. I would be on my way to hell tonight. Tell you what, if there's nothing else about salvation that's sweet, just not going to hell is good enough. I'm sure glad I'm saving God's house tonight. And I tell you what, it's so easy to roll in here on Wednesday night on two wheels like we often do. But um, it's a good place to come on Wednesday night. Sit down, hear something from God's word. And I can't imagine what it'd be like to be lost, to go through what we have to go through on a day-to-day basis. Glad I got Jesus on my side this evening. Hoping to be a blessing to you. I had nothing but heartaches and troubles. Oh, I was living my life. But thou said confusion, but now I have everything. Oh, I have everything that I need to make me happy. For I have Jesus to show. Big plans for the future. Oh, I was seeking for fortune and fame. Then I knelt there and God gave salvation. And he gave me 
life eternal. say amen to that? Great, great message, amen, great message and song. All right, take your Bible, everybody, and we're going to go to 1 Peter chapter number 5, and uh, honestly, probably one of my favorite verses in all the Bible, 1 Peter chapter number 5, hope you have a copy of God's Word with you tonight, follow with me, I won't be long this evening, the Lord willing, and we want to bring you what we feel like the Lord has prepared our heart with, hope you've come with a little appetite tonight. Maybe a little appetite, amen. Hard to, hard to feed anybody if they don't have an appetite. So I hope you'll have a little appetite for God's word tonight. I mean, appreciate the Bible. Aren't you glad God gave us a Bible, amen. Amen, not only did he give us one, he preserved it for us. And he's kept it, amen. And it's forever settled in heaven. And not one jot nor one tittle will pass away. But it'll all be fulfilled. I praise the Lord for it. First Peter chapter number 5. I want you to look, if you will, in verse number 5. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. I call that ministerial submission. Boy, we could preach that. Don't need to, but uh, it's a great thing right there. Ministerial submission. But then watch this. Yea, all of you. This is hard right here. Yea, all of you be subject one to another. I call that mutual submission. Mutual submission. Not many folks would like to do that. Being subject one to another. That's a great phrase. Well, watch this. And be clothed with humility. That's the means of submission right there. I'm not going to preach that verse, but it's all there. Ministerial submission. Mutual submission and then the means of submission. Be clothed with humility. For God resisteth the proud and giveth grace to the humble. Verse 6. Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. Casting all your care upon him for he careth for you. Verse 7, look at it again. Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. I want to preach tonight with the help of the Lord on the cure for care. The cure for care. I'm glad I know something about verse number seven. And I'm glad you know something about the reality of verse number seven. There are actually two kinds of care in this passage of scripture. Number one, Brother Ben, there is an anxious care. Worry and anxiety and undue concern about the earthly cares of this life. And ladies and gentlemen, we all have them. There is an anxious care in verse number seven. But I want to hasten to say tonight to this good audience, not only is there an anxious care, but thank God there is an affectionate care. An affectionate care. You say, what affectionate care? It's found in this verse. Well, it says, for he cares for you. I, I know, I know a lot. I know a lot. And I know you do. Matter of fact, Brother David, I'm very well acquainted with the cares of this life. I mean, I mean, honestly, they're my best friends sometimes. I know a whole lot about the cares of life. But I want to tell you tonight, I also know about that affectionate care that he careth for me. 
Thank God he's the dearest friend that I've ever had. Thank God he said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Thank God he said, if I would cast my burden upon the Lord, I shall be sustained and the righteous shall never be moved. Thank God tonight you may be in this sanctuary and weighed down, absolutely weighed down with the cares of life, with the anxiety about earthly things. But aren't you glad to be able to say tonight that there's one in heaven that's seated at the right hand of the throne on high that's ever living to make intercession for you and I. And I want to serve notice tonight on this congregation that he cares for you and I. Hallelujah. Look at verse 7 again. Casting all your care upon him, for he cared for you. Sister, please, sister tonight. Sister, would you write your name right there? Please, tonight, would you do that for me? I mean that. Would you write your name right next to that? Sir, sir, that's weighted down with the cares of life, would you write your name right there? As a matter of fact, Brother Randy Jr., why don't we all take a pen? And if you don't want to, you don't have to. Why don't we all, Brother Ben, write our name right there? Think about the God that created this world, the God that created this universe, the God that spoke light into existence and created this world in six literal days. Somebody help me. I said literal days. Look up here. We're not evolutionists, amen. Thank God we are creationists, amen. And we believe in a literal creation. But Brother Darren, thank God about a God uh, that created all this. And not only created all this, but he upholds all things by the word of his power. He not only created it, Brother Trey, but praise the Lord, he sustains it. He sustains it. I'm talking about the God that knows the stars by name. I'm talking about a God that created planet earth. I'm talking about a God tonight that scooped out the mountain and carved the rivers and the streets and the valleys are you listening? And that God cares about me. Amen. That God is the God of my salvation. That God is concerned. That's what it literally means. He's concerned about the things that concern me. He's concerned, Brother Rick Wofford, about the things that worry me. Oh, hallelujah. Uh, for a personal Savior. Hallelujah tonight. Uh, for an ever abiding companion that goes with me every step of the way. I want you to understand tonight that the very things you're concerned about are the things that God's concerned about. Hallelujah goes right there. Hallelujah goes right there. It might be spiritual, it might be emotional, it might be meritable, it might be church-wise, it might be physical, it might be financial, it might be friendship, it might be a family situation, but the Bible said casting all you care upon him, why? Because he cares about you. I'm glad my wife cares. I'm glad you care. I'm glad my brothers care. I'm glad my mother cares. I'm glad I guess my dad cares. Over Brother Kyle, I'm glad tonight that Jesus cares. Amen. I'm glad the Lord cares. I mean, he's interested in me and he's interested in you. And he knows exactly what's going on in my life. He knows exactly about every trial. He knows exactly about every situation, every circumstance, every adversity, everything. Listen to this. Everything that bothers me, he knows exactly what's going on. Hallelujah. 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 Is your heart broke tonight? Is your heart broke? And I know what I'm talking about. I said, is your heart broke? He cares about you. You got, you got a physical ailment? Let's get real personal, okay? You got a physical ailment? You got a physical situation? You have a physical uh, burden? You have a physical problem? 
you have a physical situation going on that you're dreading, hey, guess what? He cares about you. You have a major decision to make? <laughs> Let's just form a line. Let's just form a line. It's going to start right up here and go all the way back over that fellowship hall. Do you have a major decision to make? Are you wrestling with something? I said, are you wrestling with something? Are you trying to make the right decision before God in the sight of your own God in heaven and having a clear heart and a clear conscience? Or do you have a major decision? Look up here, friend. He cares about you. He cares about you. Is somebody worrying you? I said, is somebody worrying you? He cares about you. He cares about you. You got a family problem tonight? I said, you got a family problem tonight? He cares about you. Amen. Do you need a job? Do you need a job? He cares about you. Would you like another job? Somebody help me. Would you like another job? He cares about you. You're going through a divorce? He cares about you. Your health failing you? He cares about you. You got financial pressure? You can't hardly stand it anymore? I said, you got financial pressure? You can't stand it anymore? He cares about you. You got, a, you got aging parents that are one, one step away from the grave? He cares about you. Are you going to the hospital tomorrow? He cares about you. Are you going to the funeral home tomorrow night? I feel like preaching. He cares about you. You got a church problem? He cares about you. you. Got a Sunday school problem? He cares about you. you. Got a business decision? Thank God he cares about you. What I'm trying to say is tonight, you may think it's small, and you may think it's minute, and you may think it's little, but with God it's not little. With God it's not small. I want you to know tonight that God cares. Jesus cares. The Holy Ghost cares. He's got his eye on you. He knows what's going on. He knows where you are. He knows what you're going through. He sees those tears in your eyes. I said he sees those tears in your eyes. Oh, God. Hallelujah. Thank God I'm glad he cares about me. I'm glad he cares about me. And I'm glad he cares about you. No matter what it is, no matter what's happening, no matter what, how much it hurts, no matter how deep it hurts, no matter how lonely you feel, no matter how forsaken you feel, maybe you don't even feel, maybe you don't even feel, look at the verse. He cares about you. There's never going to be a day. There's never going to be a time. God, we ought to just run to the red rooster and back. I like Brother McNeese said Monday night. I almost ran. I think I was going to run. I might have ran. I already got back. Somebody say amen. For you that don't understand what we're talking about, Sometimes you just get so happy. Sometimes you just get so excited. Sometimes you just get so stirred up. You just feel like running, amen? I mean just pull a force gun. Somebody say amen. I mean just run because you want to run. Thank God for some excitement. Thank God for some enthusiasm. Thank God every now and then it all bubbles over, amen? Oh, please tonight, please know. Please know there's two kinds of care in this verse. There's two kinds of care. There's an anxious care. For Miss Malia, there's an affectionate care. An affectionate care. That affectionate care, number one, is powerful. It's powerful. He is the God that upholds the very universe that you and I live in. That's the one I'm talking about. That's the one I'm bragging on. That's the one who owns me. That's the one that knows you say, you don't have any problems. No, I don't have any, do I? You don't have any worry. No, I don't have any, do I? You don't carry anything on your heart. No, I don't carry anything on my heart, do I? I just got a church and a school to be responsible for. That's enough to put anybody in an early grave. But you know what? He cares about my, he cares about my state of mind. 
He cares about the decisions I have to make. He cares about whether or not I'm leading in the right way. I'm glad I can talk to him. I'm glad I can pray to him. I'm glad I can seek him. Now I'm glad, thank God, he's not an Indian giver and he hasn't run off and left me. He's right there where he's always been. Thank God, even in all the pressure, all the worry, all the strain, all the decisions, thank God I have an affectionate care. An affectionate care. He cares about us. It's a powerful care. It's a powerful, it's a powerful, it's a powerful affectionate care. Number two is sympathetic. It's sympathetic. What do you mean sympathetic? Because it says he cares for you. Amen. He cares for you. Not only is it powerful, not only is it sympathetic, but it's near to you and I. How near is it, Miss Stephanie, man? How near is it? Well, I'll tell you this. He cares so much, he moved inside of me. Say amen. That's how near it is, Brother Trey. But not only that, but it's constant, amen. It's constant. Your friends may not understand. Your family may not understand. Your co-workers may not understand. Your church members may not understand. But I want to tell you tonight, I want everybody in this building to know God in heaven only knows who's in my mind and who's on God. Well, we're all on God's mind, but who exactly needs this message tonight? I want you to know tonight that the care, the affectionate care that God has for his individual children, it's not, it's not intermittent. It's not off and on. It's not up and down. It's not summer, winter, no, no, no. It's constant, amen. It's constant, amen. It's constant. Did you get that little tried out line? Did you get that? Do you understand the verse? Is that, I, I, I'm not going to go no further until the class responds. Do you understand the verse? Number one, there's an anxious care. Well, number two, Miss Lynn, there's an... Uh, Affectionate care. He cares for you. Now I want to ask you a question. Now I'm going to ask you something. Everybody look at me. Everybody listen. Are we doing our part? Brother Manning said, are we, doing our, are, are we doing our part when it comes to the fruition and the reality and the fulfillment of this verse? Stay with me, okay? Brother Jonathan, are we doing our part to realize the great depth of meaning and truth that is found in this passage. So, well, preacher, if you tell me what it is, I, I'd find out whether or not I'm doing it. Well, let me get you hungry first. Let me get your little appetite stirred up a little bit. I'm asking you, are we doing our part? So, well, what is it? What is our part? Ms. Thompson, and that is Ms. Thompson, right? So good to see you on the lower level. God bless you. That's great. And that's Gracie right there. Is that Gracie? Wave at me, Gracie. That's a good name, by the way. Grace, Gracie, Gracie. That's good stuff. Amen. Glad you're on the lower level. Appreciate it. But here's our part. Here's our part. Now listen close. Right. Listen close. If you want everything I've been preaching about, right. if you want to know it in a personal way, right. you're going to have to do your part. Here's our part. Cast it. I'm still in one verse. Casting. Look at verse 7. How much of it? How much class? What does that mean in the Greek? If it was in the Hebrew, what does that mean in the Hebrew? What does that mean in the English? We're not doing our part. We're not doing our part. We're not. Now listen, it's going to get really quiet. It's going to get really quiet. How do you cast? How do you cast? I am pleading with you people. I'm pleading with you right now. I'm pleading with you. I only know of one way. I only know of one way. Somebody's got to be praying. Thank you. songwriters say take your burdens to the Lord and leave them there that's casting I want to call brother so and so and get his input I want to call sister so and so and get her advice 
I want to. I want to. I want to I wanna talk to all of my friends on Facebook. Don't get mad at me. Just stay with me, okay? I want everybody to weigh in on Facebook. That's not casting. It's not casting. Casting is up. Dear Lord, you know these decisions I've got to make, Lord, as a pastor of this church. Oh, dear God, I don't know how to make them without you, Lord. Lord, would you give me wisdom? Lord, would you give me instruction? Lord, would you give me the peace of mind? Lord, would you give me the direction I need to go in? That's casting. So here's my question tonight, this great audience, great audience. All that's bothering you, all that's bothering you, are you casting it on him? I'll tell you this, I'm going to tell you this, I'll tell you a little secret. If we'll learn to cast it on him, Ben, if we'll learn to cast it on him, guess what? It liberates our soul, say amen. It liberates our soul, Brother Galloway. And guess what I found out? I guess what I found out through experience, Brother Herpel. You know what I found out? That when we truly cast it on him, it liberates us to such a degree that we're able to enjoy him more and enjoy serving the Lord more and enjoy our Christian life. And I'll tell you what else it does. It puts contentment. It puts joy. It puts peace. It puts tranquility. You can face the storm. Somebody help me now. You can face the trial. You can face the anxiety. You can deal with the worry. You can deal with the pressure. You can deal with the anxiety. You can deal listen, here's another big word right here. You can deal with the upsetness. I said you can deal with the upsetness. How come? Because you're giving it to God and you're talking to God and you're relying on God and you're depending on God. You're casting it towards God. By the way, he can carry it a whole lot better than you can. Thank God he's stronger than you are. He's powerful than you are. He's wiser than you are. He is able somebody hallelujah right there. He is able to take care of the situation. He may not take care of it like you'd like to be taken care of but he'll take care of it according to his plan. Casting all your care. Oh, the word is anxious care. It's anxious worry. It's being fretful. Being fretful. Being worrisome. Let me give you some more words, all right? It's, uh, it's things that bother us. Things that troubles our mind. Things that upset you. Things that concern you. Here's another word, Brother Mark Jordan. Things that occupy your mind. Uh, does anybody know anything about that? Come on, church. Talk to me. Anybody know anything about things that occupy your mind? Occupy your mind, and they stay there. They stay there. Those are cares. Those are cares. By the way, those cares, when they occupy your mind that, like that, they will harass a man. They'll disturb his mind. They'll depress your spirit. They'll mar happiness. They'll bother you. Listen to me now. I know what I'm talking about. They'll bother you and they'll upset you to such a degree, it'll mar your Christian effectiveness. You know what else it'll do? It'll rob you of spiritual worship. It'll rob you of the peace of God that passes all understanding. It'll hurt you spiritually. It'll cripple you. You say, but why will it cripple me? Look at me. Because you're weighted down. You're weighted down with everything. You're, 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 you're trying to carry it all by yourself. You're trying to carry it alone. Brother Bob Jackson, God did not design us to carry all of our care alone. Somebody needs to amen me right there. That's a good statement. God did not design us to carry, Brother, Bob, Brother Blackwell, all of our care alone. He designed us, Brother Daniel, so we depend on him. We rely on him. We trust him. And listen to me, we talk to him. We give it all to him. Did I say it was easy? Did I say it was easy? No, I didn't say it was easy. I've never said it was easy. But I will stand up here tonight, Mr. Menez, and tell you, it's possible. It's possible. Amen. Those that worship, those that enjoy the Lord, and by the way, here at Mountain View, here at Mountain View, I praise the Lord 
that we can enjoy him while church is going on. I've enjoyed being here tonight. How about you? I'm not going to get in that truck belly and complain and cry and say, well, dead it wasn't no dead service to me. I'm having a wonderful time. Those that enjoy the Lord, and by the way, you, you get out of it what you put in it. That was free. That was free. Those that worship, those that enjoy the Lord, those that have a smile, those that have joy, those that have the peace of God that passes all understanding, those, Brother Randy, that know tranquility and contentment, those are not the Christian that don't have issues and don't have problems and don't have burdens and don't have care. My, if I stood up here and testified to you of all that I know about this congregation, the what they're carrying, what they're worried about, and the valleys they're walking through, we'd be here till tomorrow night at the same time and further. But you know what? Those that enjoy the Lord are not problem and worry and carefree. But Miss Kathy, they're not carefree. But thank God they've learned the secret. They've learned the secret. And the secret is... Cast it on the Lord. Leave it in the Lord's hands. Talk to the Lord. Trust the Lord. Depend on the Lord. Tell him all about it. Tell him all about it. He can carry it for you. He can give you grace. Paul had a thorn in the flesh. I wish I had somebody. Paul had a thorn in the flesh. Somebody said that was blindness. Is that what you've read through the years? Is that what you've read through the years? Is that what you've read through the years? That maybe his torn in the flesh was blindness or, or partial blindness or partial blindness or, or a rather perhaps grotesque uh, appearance? Uh, he, he talked about his appearance in one passage and, and on and on. But I'm not sure what a thorn was. Nobody knows. And by the way, nobody knows because all of us may get a thorn one day and God just wanted us all to know it doesn't matter what the thorn is. What matters is his grace is sufficient. And you know what he did, Brother Pearson? Watch this, church. He prayed three times about it. He said, Lord, would you remove it? Would you remove it? Would you remove it? He said, no, I'm not going to remove it. It keeps you humble for one thing. I'll tell you what I'll do, Paul. I'll give you grace. I'll give you grace. Would you not think and agree with me tonight that if anybody knew anything about Christian victory, it was Paul? So Paul was not carefree. Paul was not worry free. Paul, what about this verse? He said, I've been shipwrecked, been out in the deep and not in the, 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 the deep and not in the day, forsaken by my brethren, led over the wall with a basket, stoned at Lystra, on and on and on, beside the care of the churches that's laid on me every day. So Paul, Brother Kevin, he knew about care. Yeah. Look at me, church, I'm trying to go somewhere. He knew about care. But he also found the secret of a victorious Christian life, Brother Stephen Long. And that victorious Christian life is not alleviating yourself from all your care. It's knowing what to do with all of your care. So, well, I want out from underneath all my care. I want to be through with my care. Look up. I want to help you. Now, listen, listen, listen. That's not going to happen until you and I get to the pearly white city. It's not going to happen not going to happen as long as we live on this terrestrial as terrestrial right earthly as long as we live on this terrestrial ball guess what we're going to have care and you know what I found out <laughs> David you know what I found out you know one situation you get taken care of and I'll just be just hallelujah thank you Jesus thank you Lord and before I can whistle Dixie yeah. I've got another something else going on something else happening Somebody else is worrying the purity fire out of me. Amen. Y'all know what I'm talking about? That's the way it works. That's the way it works. I appreciate you want to tell me your cares. I appreciate you want to tell your sisters in Christ. I'm talking about you ladies. I appreciate you men wanting to be brothers in Christ and share your burdens and cares with the brothers. Let me tell you something. There's only one. There's only one that can truly give you the grace, and give you the strength, and give you the encouragement to continue to go on. This young man right here on the front, I'm using for an example, for a solid month, for a solid month in the prayer room, and 
I'm sure on the Sunday morning prayer leaves, this young man's family, back and forth to the hospital, back and forth to the hospital. Your mother's still in there? Got out yesterday. Fixing to go on an excursion. Your mom and dad, just them two together. What happens? Another physical adversity. Bam, winds up right back in the hospital. His own mom. Grandmother been sick for weeks and weeks and weeks, weeks and weeks. One thing after another, after another, after another. You know, I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it diminish your joy. I haven't seen it diminish your zeal. I haven't seen it diminish your fire. I haven't seen it diminish your excitement. You're just as excited as when all the sickness struck. You must have, you must have somehow took it off God. We've all got to do. Come on, Lord. We've got to, church. We've Good. got to. Good We've got to. I'm talking about every day. I'm talking about consistently. I'm talking about Brother Jonathan regularly. Tell the Lord about it. Share it with Jesus. Give it to Jesus. Trust Jesus with it. I need wisdom. So do I. So do I. More than I've ever needed it. Ever. You know what? <laughs> Pastor to church and having a church and school all at the same time. Do I ever get to coast a little bit? Don't look like it. Doesn't look like it. So I'm always going to have care. I do not have to let it weigh me down to such a degree that I've lost my joy. I've lost my peace. Y'all remember what Dr. Robbins used to say? A lot of you remember a lot of what he used to say. You know what one of my favorite sayings was? You know what one of my favorite sayings was? We're in your corner. We're in your corner. And I want to say this to the brothers and sisters of this church. Hey, we're in your corner. Don't ever let the devil tell you that we're not. We're in your corner. But guess what? Guess what? I know somebody that's been in your corner before we ever got in your corner. And thank God he's never left your corner. Hallelujah goes right there. He's never left your corner. Tell him, sister, tell him. Say, well, all I do is cry. Oh, he likes that. He likes that. You know, he's got a bottle. Look it up. He's got a bottle. He's gathering all that up. It's in the Bible. It's in there. So all I can do is just lay there and cry. He likes that. So I don't even have no words. Oh, he understands what you're saying. He, under, he understands what you're saying. He really does. He, he, he's a good interpreter. I was at the hospital of North Grove with my wife. I'll tell you more about that later. She's got some tests run. And, but she, I'll just tell you, she's got a parathyroid tumor. So they're going to have to go get it real soon. Hopefully, 99% of the time, it's not cancerous. So she had tests and everything run today. She has a parathyroid tumor. So uh, that's why all the tests were there. But I was in the waiting room, and some little youngers were there, sign language. And I saw these two little kids, Brother Randy, and I had my iPad, because I was going to be real, real studious and study on my iPad. But my heart just melted. These two little kids, they had nothing to do. So I gave them my iPad and turned on Mickey Mouse for them. And let them watch Mickey Mouse. And they sat there and loved, they loved it. But my point is, that lady, the mama, she, 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 and she couldn't talk. They was doing sign language. It was sign language. And had a lady from Spartanburg Regional that was employed by Spartanburg Regional that was her interpreter that was in that waiting room. So everything I would ask a question, that lady would do all that, how to do it. They'd do all that and all this, and they'd tell this lady. And she'd answer, smile, and look at me, and, Thank me for letting the little, the little urchins watch Mickey Mouse. The sweetest can be. Sweetest can be. My point is, that lady had an interpreter. 
And when you lay down at night or you're in your house and all you can do is just moan and groan and cry about all your care, I want to tell you something. He interprets every bit of it. He can interpret it. He knows that language. Sister, he knows that language. Brother, he knows exactly how you feel. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, help us, Lord, that we cast our care on you. Please help us to cast our care. Please thank you that you have that affectionate care. Thank you for God's people. Thank you for a church family. Thank you for folks that love us and care about us. Lord, we want to love them and care about them back. But I'm glad, Lord, you care. I appreciate you caring. Thank you, Lord. I, I don't reckon I needed it, but I think I've encouraged my own self tonight. Thank you. Thank you. I'm glad you care. And I know you do. I just need to start telling you more. Help me to do it. Help our church to do the same. Bless as we sing in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand and sing. 371.